So uh, we basically got the uh, cover off. That shit just came right the fuck right off. Excuse my language, but that shit broke off way too fucking easy. Um, I got the ignition switch out already. Um, it came out relatively easy as well. Um, basically, what I had to do was rotate the ignition T to the crank position. Uh, once it was all the way to the crank position starting, I pushed in the little tab, and then the ignition cylinder just came right out. Um, this is what it looks like complete. This is what it looks like once it falls apart when it comes out. Um, but basically, I just pushed that tab in and out. Um, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to program the new transponder to the car um, to make sure that it takes and accepts. Um, we're going to kind of trick the car a little bit into thinking the key's actually in an ignition. So this right here is the immobilizer, or the immobilizer, immobilize, Im, the anti-theft uh, receiver, uh, where it receives the RFID from the key um, to the receiver right here. Um, so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna to trick the car into thinking that the ignition key, the master key is actually in the ignition switch um, by placing the old one by it um, and turning the car on. And what we're gonna do is we're going to hopefully get the big enough screwdriver, rotate the ignition switch to the on position. And we're gonna do this till the security light goes out. Once the security light goes out, it's detected the, the master key and we're gonna try and program the new one. Within 10 seconds, you have to put the replacement one up. Uh, and as you can see on the screen here, it says three keys are now programmed. I don't know if you can see that or not. You see on the screen where it says three keys are now programmed. I was able to trick it into thinking that this was one of the uh, another keys or extra keys to it. However, this ignition key has the new um, tumbler set up for the replacement key, so the old key won't work. Um, so now, um, basically, we're just going to insert um, this into the ignition cylinder. Hopefully, it'll go in with no problems, which it probably won't. So we're going to have to play with it again uh, and get the tumbler to where we need it, which is basically about right there. And hopefully, you're your driver three memory. Uh, your driver three memory set features. Let's see. Mission, turn the key off. Turn the key on. And hopefully the security light should go out. Man, that scared me for a second. I thought it didn't work. It seemed all good in my head. But yeah, basically there you have it. Um, we replaced the ignition key. Um, here's the old one. If I can get it out of here. Probably going to mess up somehow. Here, you want hold that. See if I can get this out of here. Of course I can't get this key out of here. Maybe we rotate this some. Maybe. Right there. Hopefully it won't fall out. And we might be able to reuse it one day if we ever decide to move. So here's the original key. Um, as you can see, it doesn't rotate the ignition lock anymore uh, because we replaced the ignition lock. So whoever has our spare key can't start the car now. Um, we can go through with a Tech 2 on the web uh, kiosk and uh, dump the key if we wanted to. Um, but I don't have a subscription for that. I'll have to pay for that. I'm probably going to have to pay for that to do the, um, the remote, which we're going to cover here in a minute. Um, so if I have to pay for that, it's fine. We'll go ahead and pay for it to dump that other key or dump the two keys. But as of right now, um, the replacement key I have does work to start the vehicle. Um, as you can see, um, it won't operate the door until I replace the door lock, but the remote control for the car is still going to be the same. So whoever the, um, original or not the original, but whoever has their spare key currently still has a remote to unlock and lock the doors via the remote but they won't be able to uh, start the vehicle and take it unless they go through the hassle of breaking the column and so forth and so on, which I don't think they're going to go through because they're not going to know any better. Um, to program an additional key, um, as you can see, that's the one. We're going to um, replacement. We're going to turn the key to the on position till the theft light goes out. Once the theft light goes out, we're going to stick the new key to be programmed in. We'll wait for the theft light to go out. And now it says I have two keys programmed. Okay to dismiss. We'll take this key out, stick it in. Now I have uh, two keys, uh, replacement keys that will now start our vehicle with the original key not able to rotate the ignition cylinder. Uh, so that's how you replace the ignition lock. 
We're gonna do the door lock next, which is gonna be the um, this key here, the new keys, which we're gonna replace. So yeah, dealer wants uh, upwards of 1200 bucks. We basically did it right now for, I think we paid $60 for the uh, replacement lock ignition cylinder and the keys uh, off eBay. Uh, the cover just basically snaps back on. Let's see if I can get this lined up perfectly. Probably not, this stuff never comes out right, but we're gonna give it a whirl, see what happens. Snaps, snaps. We're gonna put this guy in there. We were meeting some kind of resistance here for some reason. Is that in there? Let's see, why is it holding up? Oh, there it goes. We're gonna slide that to that part, and then this should snap together, and then back here. Maybe, if I can get that part to line up. These things, once you pull them apart, they never ever go back together, right? Hopefully, the car won't fall apart, but there it is, it's all together. The rubber's out, and then you just basically put it back to where she had it, the lady that drives this car. That's about right. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and pull the door panel off now. We'll get that door lock changed out, and then we'll work on uh, getting that remote dumped and a new one programmed. See you in a bit.